Hi everyone, welcome to the first ever exciting, super exciting uh, training tutorials for newbies and okay players in a program that I like to call Pros in Bronze. Alright, so, oh my god that was fast, didn't mean to do that. Um, so this game is uh, between a player named Varar who um, I believe was asking for a mentor on Reddit, I believe. I might have got that mixed up, and if I do, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure that's how it happened. And he was asking me to look at this game, and he was asking me to give him some feedback, how it can be better. Um, as you can see, I don't think his hatchery is uh, cute to the minerals. There you go. And, uh, it's sort of, um, okay, so a few things I want to talk about in this game are, uh, micro and macro terms, which we'll get to later, but, uh, to start off with, I just want to discuss basic mechanics, which would be uh, just using your hotkeys intelligently. Um, hotkeys are really important, uh, as anyone who has played StarCraft will tell you, because they allow you to jump over, jump around the map to where your attention is needed, and that's very, very important for any player who's trying to simultaneously manage his micro and his macro. Uh, as you can see, Rar is just. Uh, Sending out his OV here, just uh, scouting the enemy unit. Scouting the enemy. So he sees him, and all right. So he had to even at the, this early in the game. Okay, let me uh, restart it again. Uh, this game is all about making decisions. Uh, every action you take is the result of a decision you made, um, and you have to learn how to think of it that way. So, for example, uh, the Overlord could have just scouted the edge of that and then pulled back and he would have known where his enemy was and his enemy wouldn't have known where he was because the overlord slightly outranges the command center in terms of view. So as you can see he's drifting over here, sees the barracks, standard wall off by turn going on and uh, wall offs are a pain because uh, as Zerg you want to be making Okay, as Zerg, you want to be as greedy as possible, right? As you can see, you know, he's got the right idea, he's got tons of drones. And, uh, but you want to be as greedy as possible. And the only way you can do that intelligently, I mean, you can blindly drone, which may work and may not work. Uh, but as long as you can scout and get an idea of uh, what your enemy's army composition is and when his attack might be coming. Uh, I don't know where I was going with this, but... <laughs> Uh, use that to decide when uh, to make decisions. So uh, Rar should really be getting an expansion very soon. Um, the second expansion for Zerg isn't as big a deal for uh, Itrace as it is for Terran Protoss because uh, hatcheries are reasonably cheap, cheaper than uh, both Terran and Protoss, and they are a unit producing facility. So you always want to be aware of when your natural is going down and uh, as you, uh, personally, I, re I would recommend you uh, use this overlord and stick him right here. That way you can see if there's any bunker cheese going on, because uh, one effective way to put early aggression on the zerg... Well, obviously he didn't hatch first, but if you did hatch first, for example, uh, a common response is to plant a bunker just right at the edge of the range, roughly around here, and bunker can just shoot it down, because it takes so many zerglings to take down one bunker. Okay, um, alright, so after this game, so he's making Zerglings, okay, so you have to ask yourself, what is what is the purpose of these Zerglings? Uh, these Zerglings could be drones right now, they could be mining more stuff, and he, he uh, mining more minerals and Vespian gas, well, I guess just minerals, but uh, he could be making a lot more money at this point, but instead he has 12 Zerglings, which would have been 6 drones instead. Um, Zerglings are effective against a lot of units, uh, but they rely on an overwhelming number of them to be effective, to get surrounds, basically, which is the best way to use Zerglings. Uh, as we can see, the Terran player has scouted the expansion by the Zerg, and the Zerg player is, uh, uh well, he has a Roach Warren, which is, uh, I'll get to that in a moment, but, um, so he has lots of Zerglings, he's getting Zergling speed, so he's gonna have, on the field, he's gonna have two bases, He's going to have a bunch of Zerglings, and he's going to have a Roachhorn. So the question is, what does he do from here? Um, 
And as any good Zerg player will tell you, uh, be as greedy as possible, but just be aware of when your uh, opponent's counterattack is coming. So, um, Rar, uh, one thing I highly recommend is that if you have units and are just idling, um, you should always be trying to do something. Uh, especially at the beginning of the game, there's always something to do for uh, like military units. Like let's say, let's say he got pressured by a couple of marines, and this is the response. He built lots of zerglings. Uh, so what he can do is take map control, which is another or fancy word for map awareness. And no, no, go to the zel, go to the ah. All right, so he could go to the zel naga, and okay, so he knows his opponent has marines. Not super effective, but uh, but yeah, just avoid running by the ledge when you're scouting. But anyway. Uh, going back here, uh, take the Zell Naga Tower because that gives you a good, well, it gives you good map awareness. Uh, use Overlords. Uh, I recommend placing them here because and it gives you a couple of moments heads up as to any incoming drops. Um, also, but yeah, for the military units, which, uh, what I wanted to talk about was uh, use them to destroy rocks, either your rocks for your third base, your opponent ro uh, opponent's rocks here in the top left, where his third base would go where you can destroy the gold. There's plenty of rocks. Plenty of rocks for everyone. And, um, like, even right here, since, uh, like, if you don't want to venture out too far, just kill these rocks. Boom, boom, boom. Take that. Oh my god, I probably should have minimized that much sooner. But anyway, uh, as you can see, it's going to be a reasonably long game, which gives me uh, plenty of time to just rant. Okay. Um, okay, so as you can see, he's getting a spire, which is, uh, in my opinion, a relatively early spire in comparison to what he has on the field so far. Um, Mutas are a very powerful unit, but they also must be microed very heavily to be used effectively. Because you basically always want to be harassing with Mutas. Like, they, they won't be enough until they get to super high numbers to kill your opponent outright. But they will allow you to um, really annoy him. <laughs> As anyone who's had six mutas bouncing between bases will tell you, they're a frustrating unit to face. Okay, so, um, so roar. Uh, things you can work on. Okay, so you only have one hatch in your uh, binded in your hotkeys, which is an issue. You should ideally have your important structures like uh, hatchery binded to uh, a hotkey. Uh, personally, I recommend putting the hatchery on three or four. Uh, depending on what you're comfortable with, because uh, control groups one and two, I feel, should be uh, primary military units, just to give uh, help your micro in the field. Um, okay, I think I just heard an overseer. Yeah, two overseers coming in. Okay, so uh, overseers, um, you, I'm not sure how often you see them in uh, high-level matchups. But they do have an effective ability called Changeling, and basically what happens is that they poop out a little dude, and he can wander around, taking the face of his enemy. It's sort of like the thing, but much less violent. Uh, okay, so we have Mutas on the field. So Mutas, um, as soon as you spawn them, uh, you have to be aware of a few things. One, uh, they should always be attacking something. Two, Missile Turrets are really, really effective against Mutalists. They're terrifying. Um, okay, so yeah, as you can see, uh, you can see his opponent's base. He's got uh, one base, uh, double starport. Uh, anytime you ever scout your enemy's base, you should be trying to get as much information as you possibly can. Okay, so he's got good saturation. No, actually, scratch that. He does not have good saturation. Uh, as you can see, he has 15 SCVs, which is pretty terrible at this point in the game. 12 minutes in. Um, but yeah, okay, so you know he's microing effectively, but you'll notice that uh, macro uh, Roar's macro has completely bombed, uh, and this is a common problem with mutas is that uh, it's really difficult to be like, all right, so I need to do my queen injects, high queen energy, not a good time. I need to uh, build more drones. I need to do all these other stuff while I'm uh, using effective muta micro, and. Uh, I feel mutas are a unit that you should use, or you should be happy to use once you have the mechanics of the game firmly down so you, your macro doesn't suffer because he has $1,200, or 1,200 minerals, I should say, and 600 Vespian gas that could be used for anything. But he's doing a good job, he's picking off units. Uh, Rari, your muta micro is, is pretty good, uh, except for running into the missile turret, but <laughs> it happens. Uh, 
but yeah, he's forcing his opponents to build missile turrets. That's pretty good because he gets SCBs off of mineral, uh, off of mining minerals. They're building out stuff which costs money. It's a fixed unit which can't move around. Um, but yeah, mutas should be. Think of mutas as like annoying seagulls, and they're just trying to pick off whatever they can. Like your opponent's trying to put a French fry in his mouth with his SCBs, and you're like, yoink, my French fry now. <laughs> Deadly seagulls. Seagulls of the sky. Uh, Alright, um, okay, so as you can see, Roar has a lot of a lot of units, and again, you have to ask yourself, what is the purpose of these units? Uh, what can they do? And he's got a few mutas here, which he should probably rally with. Okay, um, so I'm just going to follow Roar's camera, just to see what he's looking at. And he's spacing out, looking at his drones. Okay, um, so yeah, as you can see, he's looking around, right? Like, he's using his mouse to be like, okay, what am I going to do here? Um, this is the reason you should have hotkeys, and you should always have a few zerglings pooping around that you can uh, you can use just to quickly explore. So as you can see, it's got the alert. Your drones are under attack, so huh, some shit's going down. So some marauders just got dropped. And